Welcome to the Renaissance and welcome to Beating the Negro Child Part 3. And this very important notice that it is never our intention to offend anyone with our videos. It's not also our intention to suggest, insinuate or preach hate towards any group, race, tribe or person. There is also no propaganda or any deliberate attempt to misinform anyone with our videos. So please look for the books, journals, magazines or other publications or sources we reference and study them yourself. Remember, a compensation must be made to planters for 60 millions of property which the abolition of the slave trade will annihilate. Objections to stopping the slave trade, 1788. And from Ibn Khaldun, an Arab scholar, therefore the Negro nation are, as a rule, submissive to slavery because Negroes have little that is essentially human and have attributes that are quite similar to those of dumb animals as we have stated. And also from R.J. Rushdoni, the background of the Negro culture is voodoo and magic and the purposes the magic are control and power over God, man, nature and society. Voodoo and magic was the religion and life of the Americas Negro. China, the new kid on the block. Do you remember when we told you that the slave masters and their foot soldiers have incorporated China into the slave trade? And have you also seen pictures of the Chinese terrorizing or oppressing Negroes in China? We put Negroes in bracket and use it as a generic name for all those there. Remember, black is just the generic name for all dark skinned people, but Negroes are a particular and unique race. And do you also remember you have been misinformed that the virus originated from China? You also saw the British Prime Minister claim to have been infected as well as Prince Charles. And do you also remember the Fulanese in Nigeria claiming to have also been infected by the same virus? Have you then wondered why the virus did not become a scourge to the British whose PM and Prince got it, but instead the Chinese are accusing the blacks of being behind the virus? And have you also wondered why the Nigerian state would be bringing Chinese as kings to Nigeria while they are oppressing what you may mistakenly be thinking is their own people in China and the so-called African leaders? Have you wondered which type of brother you can have and he supports whoever is killing you? From Arabs to Europeans to Americans, they have always been supported against the Negroes. Have you wondered the relationship between those that ruled there and the Negroes? Have you ever wondered that? Remember, you were at one time told that the chiefs were the ones selling their own people. That's if we assume people could be sold. It was a military expedition. The army captured and yoked and sold the people. Now ask yourself, how could the leaders be selling those they were ruling? And then today, you have what you can say to be leaders again, also supporting the oppressors against their own people. Have you wondered the relationship between all these things together? Do you also remember the South African so-called xenophobic attacks? Please remember that the slave trade didn't get to places like South Africa so that you don't think that there is a relationship between the Negroes and the Hottentots. So remember also when they claimed one man provided them with a plane to evacuate people from South Africa. Do you remember all those? Do you also remember when we offered some monetary reward for anyone who can provide us with the contact of one person who came back from South Africa on that flight? They said they evacuated about 300 so-called Nigerians from South Africa at that time and we made this offer. Nobody has claimed it to date. Remember also that no one came up till today because it was all a charade. Do you also now see that the Chinese coming with dangerous vaccines were also flown down by the same man or airline? Can you then try to connect the dots? So here you see the South African time when they claim that over 300 Nigerians evacuated from South Africa by local airline, which is a complete lie. They staged it, it's a charade, which you can investigate yourself. So today, you notice that 
while the world was in lockdown, the Chinese oppressing the same Negroes and Nigerians if you so wished. The same air piece is now flying Chinese, referred to as medical team and supplies into Nigeria. Do you sit back now and ask yourself what is the relationship between this whole charade, this airline, the man and the Americans and the Europeans and of course the Chinese. You probably also saw in 2019 when they allegedly indicted this same airline, you see where it says Nigeria airline CEO indicted by US for money laundering. So you need to put all these things together and you would have started understanding how the slave master uses his foot soldiers to make all of us look foolish. And do you also remember when fake news CNN carried this news of Muslim cleric who hid Christians during attacks honored in the US? And you remember we told you these are all lies. If you looked at the news in detail, you will see where he claimed that 262 Christians were hidden in his home and mosque during the attack in central Nigeria, which are all lies. Because if you looked at it logically, break it down to first principles, you will know it will be extremely difficult for him to gather this number of people. And above all, if you read the news in detail, you will see where they said the cleric refused to give them up, as if the bandits or the terrorists come in to negotiate before they start killing. Did they not just start burning everything? Were they not so-called terrorists burning mosques and churches and they said they are not Muslims and all that? So if you were to read it with very close attention to details, you will see that it's a lie. They cooked it up. It's all a charade between the slave master and his foot soldiers. Like we told you, believe it or not, the foot soldiers, they lack humanity. They lack common sense. And you also may have heard that the real and genuine president of Nigeria as elected in 2015 may have either died or became incapacitated and the slave master connived with his brainless foot soldiers and created somebody with a mask for him to be using to be governing Nigerians via video and all that. So on the last press briefings and all that, the mask was exposed a bit, which you can see in the circled area. Those are what they will call or try to tell you are conspiracies. Now remember, if it was not who the slave masters wanted or who they want to be there, they would have piped it up, they would have investigated it, they would have brought the president for an interview and speak to him one on one to prove to you that it's not true. But they have been dodging all that because they are behind it. They use the Fulanese, which we shall continue to show you. Our interest is for you to call us conspiracists, call us what you may, but then ultimately you will see the whole thing play out. Because the moment you understand that the slave master is a liar and a subtle beast, and that his foot soldiers, they lack humanity, they lack common sense, then the next thing you will understand is that they are not the same with the Negroes. By then, you would have started understanding how the slave trade happened. Remember also that the slave master had somehow described his foot soldiers as genius. So let us reference the making of Northern Nigeria by Captain C. W. J. O. and this was published 1911 and there we saw something like this. It will be remembered that Bida and also Contagora were provinces of the empire of Sokoto in which a partly pagan and wholly indigenous population was ruled by Mohammedan emirs of an alien race, the Fulani. It has been seen that in many cases, pagan people had petitioned to be freed from their Fulani oppressors and had appeared delighted at the letter's overthrow. It may be wondered why under such circumstances, the policy was not adopted of removing the Fulanese from their governing positions and appointing instead chiefs from the people themselves. The answer is that it was considered that the Fulani race, note that he said race, was possessed of such a genius for rule and so much intelligence that their continuance in positions of responsibility was best for the people, provided that their power for evil were held in check, as in fact was assured by the appointment of a resident with an adequate force behind him. So our little question to you is, why do you think the slave master describes his foot soldiers 
and of course a different race from the Negroes as genius and at the same time tells us that they have power for evil that require to be held in check. Have you tried to put that statement in the right perspective and ask yourself why would they do that and why would they describe anyone as a genius in a place that is devoid of anything called common sense. When you start looking at that granular detail, you would have started understanding the games they are playing, including up to this latest outbreak of a virus. And above all, you will also understand why the African proverb says, when there is no enemy within, the enemies outside cannot hurt us. The enemy within. Have you ever wondered how men women and children could have been sold that is you bring a man and say i am going to sell you and he follows you to a market and then you keep him standing until some europeans walk down to that market in the bush or wherever and then take him put a chain on him or the chain you have already put have you ever tried to imagine or visualize that in practical terms beyond what the slave master tells you and you see a pregnant wife finds herself in a slave caravan along with the husband and you still believe it could have been a sale how so please if you understand how this is possible please explain it to us step by step and perhaps you understand why malcolm x said the media is the most powerful entity on earth they have the power to make the innocent guilty and to make the guilty innocent and that's power because they control the minds of the masses so if you looked at this statement in the light of the present day lockdown you will understand what he was saying so have you tried to connect the dots between how the chinese is in yoking and enslaving and oppressing negroes or blacks as you may wish or choose to call them and the slave master is claiming to have tested positive to the virus have you tried to analyze that yourself and compare with how the foot soldiers also claim to have tested positive too? Have you wondered why none of them is dying, but you are being shown images of thousands of people dying elsewhere, but they, they all recover and check out of the hospital. And for places like Nigeria, they don't ever interview or show you anyone who was allegedly cured. Have you tried to imagine what is going on behind the scenes? So have you then asked how come the Chinese left the slave masters or the Europeans whose prime ministers and princes have tested positive to the virus and are now accusing Negroes and blacks of being behind it? Have you wondered how that could be possible when you were told or misinformed that the virus originated from Wuhan, China? Remember in our last video we showed you an exchange between a Nigerian official and a Chinese official who asked the Nigerian, how did you know that this virus originated from China? And again, he went further to say professors and scientists never said it originated from China. So you need to understand this and always try to separate what you hear from the media from the fake news. Separate that from reality and truth because they are usually lies. They are targeted. So the simple answer to all these impossibilities and all these probabilities is that the enemy within was the same slave hunter of old. And to better understand how the enemy within operates and operated during the slave trade, let us reference Tropical Africa by Henry Drummond and this was published 1890 and there we are shown that Sometimes these Arab traders will actually settle for a year or two in the heart of some quiet community in the remote interior. They pretend perfect friendship. They molest no one. They batter honestly. They plant the seeds of their favorite vegetables and fruits. The Arab always carries seeds with him as if they meant to stay forever. Meantime, they buy ivory tusk after tusk until great piles of it are buried beneath their hearts and all their butter goods are gone. Then one day, suddenly, the inevitable quarrel is picked and then follows a wholesome massacre. Enough only are spared from the slaughter to carry the ivory to the coast. The grass huts of the villages are set on fire. The Arabs strike camp. 
and the slave march worse than death begins so you see how the enemy within operates where he does not live within you he doesn't strike so he comes in lives within you studies everything so that when the army comes they destroy everywhere they will know who is who so for those who kept wondering if the negroes were worshiping the true creator of heaven and earth at that time not really worship communion with where were they not protected those are some of the reasons because they were forbidden from killing by their religion at that time or their way of life even when they discovered these enemies they couldn't do anything to them and here you see from the same book we referenced you see where it tells us that the life of the native african is not all ideal it is darkened by a tragedy whose terrors are unknown to any other people under heaven of its mild domestic slavery i do not speak nor of its revolt in witchcraft nor of its endless quarrels and frequent tribal wars these minor evils are lost in the shadow of a great and national wrong among these simple and unprotected tribes arabs uninvited strangers of another race and nature pour in from the north and east with the deliberate purpose of making this paradise a hell so you see who was behind it so that's why the media was able to misinform you that it was african selling other africans and it goes further to say it seems the awful destiny of these homeless people to spend their lives in breaking up the homes of others wherever they go in africa the followers of islam are the destroyers of peace the breakers up of the patriarchal life the dissolvers of the family tie so you see how it happened and further down you see where it says arab encampments for carrying on a wholesale trade in this terrible commodity are now established all over the heart of africa our reason for showing you all this is when you look at something like nigerian government for example bringing in chinese when it's the same chinese oppressing their own people you understand that the government there belongs to the slave masters of old that the slave hunters themselves too are their food soldiers they are in control there the whole aim of that is to make it look like the negroes or black people are so foolish as you oppress them they are also honoring you that's actually what the message is supposed to cascade and you won't even know that it's not the same people we we'll give you a little example you may have seen some so-called african americans talking about boycotting china remember if that was to take effect the food soldiers in a place like nigeria will not agree because they are the same ones bringing chinese to oppress their own supposedly their own people so because they will not agree the so-called African Americans will very easily point to them and say, you see, they don't like us. Despite the fact that our people are being oppressed, they are bringing the Chinese to come and make money off the same people they are oppressing and also, and also how they do not show any sympathy or love towards their so-called brothers whose own forefathers or forebears were sold by the forebears of these ones today. But they won't know that they are not the same people. They were also dealing with the same people whose forefathers sold their own forefathers but unbeknownst to them they think they are the same with them again if you were to remember the biafran war of 1967 to 70 where the slave hunters of old ganged up against tiny biafra back then you would discover that in this letter purportedly written by someone because Martin Luther King Jr. was to visit the Biafran territory before he was assassinated. Our question to you is, why do you think he didn't go to the north? Who were the aggressors? Because they knew very well at that time where they were mostly from, where the slaves were predominantly stolen from. And you notice from this letter that the writer had previously mailed it, but said that letters were not being delivered to Biafra territory at that time. So to further show you that the slave masters and their foot soldiers are working closely together, you will notice that if you were doing anything in Biafra, in mostly those countries that were part of the slave trade, you will see how they will be against you. Just try and investigate this yourself. You don't need to believe us. That's what we always tell you. Investigate it yourself. Be it in the banks, be it in anything you want to register association and you put Biafra, you will see how they will all gang up together and give you one flimsy reason or another 
why they cannot register it. Give it a try. And you also notice that the person said, if you have objections to give the message personally to Lieutenant Colonel Ojuku, may I then ask you to post the letter and put it in an envelope and put it in a post box in Biafran territory so that it can reach the president. Please see that my request comes to a great end. I should be happy. So you should be able to ask yourself, if Nigerians were all the same, a part of it were slaughtering another part with the help of the slave masters. The Arabs were the pilots because they didn't have pilots. The guns were supplied by the Russians and the British and all that. You should be able to ask yourself, what, how can somebody killing you with the help of another people somewhere be telling you that you are brothers? And for those who may be doubting that the COVID and all those things could have been all orchestrated by the slave master and their foot soldiers to give them another pretext to unleash their terror on the Negroes, let us show you that when they say Africans, we are all Africans, it was still a name given to you by the slave masters, that whole area were not called Africa before. So we reference a history of all nations from the earliest periods to the present time or universal history in which the history of every nation, ancient and modern, is separately given and this was by S.G. Goodrich and it was published in 1852 and there we are shown where Africa was and what the other places were known as. The term Africa is derived from the Romans who first restricted it to the region occupied by Carthage but it was finally extended to the whole peninsula so you understand what it's talking about. It was only a tiny portion they just extended it and started calling it everywhere the same name to allow them do what they are doing right now which was to subjugate and enslave the Negroes and if you looked further down you will see that all these names were different. Libya was Baka, Africa proper was Tunis, and Numidia was Orgias in Path, Carthage in Ruins and all that. Our interest is for you to understand why they make changes to those names as well, so that the next generation will be disconnected from their past. And for a brief look at the countries that were part of the slave trade at that time, let us reference Africa, past and present, a concise account by Moister William and it was published 1879 and there we are shown that as an improvement in the plan of conducting the traffic that's the slave trade African trading companies were formed and small European settlements were planted at intervals along the western coast all the way from Cape Verde to the equator by English, Dutch, French and Portuguese mercantile firms so we also challenge the aboriginal wannabes, the Indian wannabes, the likes of the Nkalaway or Kurumi Ahau to show us how they conducted their own trade from the Americas to Africa and the rest of the world now that they came in with the slave master's confusion that the Negroes are now the same with the Indians or aboriginal. We challenge them to it. So it goes further to say that these were called slave factories so when you hear factory today they will say factory dutch factory this that it's talking about the slave factories that's what they called it because they had to store the slaves these are human beings you have to remember and then wait for the ship to get there before they can be shipped and it was done by the army that's why you notice that in a place like nigeria today the nigerian army has killed more people over this virus than the virus itself and you also notice that the English was mentioned foremost because they were the biggest slave hunters at that time and you see why they work very closely with the Fulani in Nigeria because those ones were the biggest there as well. And it goes further to say, and agents were appointed in connection with them whose business it was to negotiate with native traders, stimulate them to activity in their slave hunting expeditions and to purchase slaves and other produce that they might be ready in the barracoons when the ships called to take in their cargoes at the appointed season. Now notice that he said slave hunting. So our question to you is where did he change to slave trading as far as Negro land and Guinea were concerned at that time. That's our question to you. You see how powerful the media is. The media has sent you into a blockade today, into a lockdown today because they know how to overhype stuff 
and then use it to deceive everyone. Permit us to ask you, is it not the same media that couldn't find its voice when Fulani Hatsmen were massacring people in that area? You see what we're talking about? Is it not the same media that wouldn't report when Nigerian army massacres Biafrans or even in Cameroonian army massacre Ambazonians? So you begin to understand how they work very closely together. They obviously agreed not to report on it. That's why you see that they all do not report the same things and report the same things. It's a game they are playing, no doubt about it, including Iran. And he goes further to say, vessels were, moreover, constructed specially for this trade and fitted with water casks, cooking apparatus and everything complete, not forgetting chains, handcuffs and other irons for the refractory. Now remember, things like prison never existed in Negroland and Guinea until the slave masters brought them. Things like police never existed. When we look at spirituality, when we look at the real truth of who the Africans or Negroes communed with prior to the slave trade and coming of the slave masters, you will understand that the slave masters brought a golden calf. They never gave the Negroes the truth anyway. 